Um, the Medicare inpatient only list is something that I was very unfamiliar with, but uh, came into play recently. But um, uh, the concept is that, uh, which I didn't understand until just this past year, is that it is a list of procedures that CMS dictates that these procedures must be done in an inpatient setting. If it's not done in an inpatient setting, then uh, the hospital will not get reimbursed for those services. Um, so that means you can't do these in an outpatient surgery center. Um, but uh, earlier last year, our hospital administration came to me in this panic because what happened at the beginning of 2018 was that uh, the code for laparoscopic prostatectomy, which most of us use as our billing for robot prostatectomy 55866, came off that inpatient only list. And so then some of the guidance that came out initially on the internet and from experts in reimbursement uh, was that the possible reimbursement to the hospitals would drop significantly if these pa patients were still continued to be done as inpatients, which I go, huh, that doesn't really make sense because a lot of our patients are 70 years old. There's no way that some of these guys can be done as outpatients. Um, so as time went on, um, the reimbursement to our hospital didn't change, fortunately. So the drama level went down drastically, fortunately. But some guidance came out from the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgery because several um, Procedure codes were also taken off the inpatient only list from Medicare, uh, which were orthopedic codes. And I think this makes a lot more sense. So, um, but then as far as pro professional fees go, it really doesn't change, um, you know, what we get as surgeons. But for the hospital, it can be a big deal. Um, but uh, total knee arthroplasty was something that came off the inpatient only list in 2018. But um, the guidance from the AAOS was that um, Medicare wasn't expecting that all of these patients would then all of a sudden be done as outpatients. But they said Medicare still expects that most TKAs to be performed on an inpatient basis. There is a small subset of patients that could appropriately receive outpatient TKAs. It is for this minority of patients that Medicare is removing the requirement of inpatient surgery. So, so then this makes, I think, a lot more sense, where um, if you have the correctly selected patient who's healthy enough, motivated enough, um, that you could send some of these guys or ladies home that same day, and then there would not be this financial disincentive to keep these patients in the hospital. But still, it spurred the question at our center, can we safely get uh, robot prostatectomy patients home that same day? Um, and uh, I know Dr. Menon had been doing that uh, very early in ex his experience doing that very successfully. Uh, when I was in my prior uh, practice in Texas, um, we were doing this very early on, uh, but uh, we started looking at this a little bit more scientifically uh, with this new um, caution that came out. And so we started giving a questionnaire to our patients. Um, if you do not feel that you could have been discharged yesterday, so this was a post-op day one questionnaire that the patients were filling out, please check off the factors that made you feel like you couldn't go home. And the number one reason was still post-operative pain. Um, you know, I think this is one huge benefit of doing robot prostatectomies, but still that first day, a lot of patients felt like they had too much pain. Uh, the number two reason was catheter discomfort, but I think, you know, that's probably a little bit overblown. But another big factor was education. A lot of patients didn't feel like they could go home that same day because they didn't get the proper teaching yet. Uh, so our ERAS program at Penn has become a lot more robust. It's a very um, active multi-specialty uh, group uh, from all the different specialties. We're trying to get um, patients home, given the right indications that same day. So this is our ERAS program for uh, robot prostatectomies. Um, so uh, on top of the magnesium citrate that they do um, the previous day, they'll take Tylenol uh, the night before 
and the morning of, they'll take Gatorade to stay well hydrated, um, and then post-operatively in the recovery room, they would be ambulated, um, uh, have their pain appropriately controlled, um, and then get plenty of fluids, um, taking PO intake. Um, Angela Smith uh, published, uh, was the head of a multi-specialty uh, multi-center group that looked at optimizing outcomes in urologic surgery. This was published in the Journal of Urology. And then one of the um, ways that they pointed out we could optimize surgical outcomes for our patients was performing peripheral regional, regional anesthetics. Um, so blocks, and so this is very common in orthopedic surgery, but one of the blocks that was pointed out, which there is a little bit of literature about, is a transversus abdominis plane block. And there's published literature in radical cystectomy, radical prostatectomy. Um, Bruce Malkowitz and Dr. al um at our center uh, per performed a study on open radical prostatectomy patients performing tap block. And the procedure for doing a tap block is under ultrasound guidance, a percutaneous injection of lidocaine or marcaine into the space between um, the transverses abdominis and internal oblique muscles. And they found that there was a significant reduction in postoperative pain. Uh, well, we started thinking about doing this for a robot prostatectomy patients, uh, but then I thought, well, why don't we just do this laparoscopically? Because under robotic guidance, laparoscopic vision, we can see the peritoneum really well, and then the plane directly underneath that, the muscle plane that you would see is your transverse abdominis. And so we did a pilot study where we worked with our pain block team. Um, they had helped us with ultrasound guidance for our initial injections, and this technique has become really very reliable for us. We take a um, in 20 gauge butterfly needle, uh, pass it in with extension IV tubing. Uh, we look at our injection site, which is the same site that our uh, block team picked out um, from the outside of the patient. We inject 10 cc's of marcaine in either side um, and then leave a little bleb. And with the help of our ultrasound guidance, we were able to identify this spot very, very reproducibly. Uh, our our initial outcomes uh, showed that there was a statistically significant uh, reduction in pain in the six to 18 hour time frame, um, and then the morphine requirements postoperatively were approaching statistical significance. So hopefully as we do more of these um, and look at these patients that we would find a statistically significant benefit. Um, but certainly I think the benefit of doing it this way is that it takes time for your block team to make it to the operating room, you have to wait for them to do the ultrasound, you have to uh, make sure that they don't sterilize your sterile field as they're doing their block, um, and then doing it you know, as the surgeon with your butterfly needle, it can be very rapid and still very effective. Um, with the help of our tap block, I think we've been able to more effectively send guys home the same day, but this is a multi-specialty um, task. Um, we've sent about 50 guys home the same day. None of the patients have gotten readmitted, but there was one patient that we couldn't send home because uh, he felt like his pain wasn't well controlled enough. But uh, that day, our anesthesiologist who helps to drive our ear protocol wasn't in the operating room and in the PACU that day, so I think that played a big role. Um, again, it's this depends on the surgeon, it depends on your anesthesiologist, it depends on your PACU team, um, but also your office staff, because a lot of these patients may call the office more um, frequently, liberally, if they go home too quickly, and so one of the things that our ERAS team has uh, started working on is a text messaging service, so uh, patients are given a, a number that they can text with, and then they can have a computerized response system depending on what their question is to hopefully save, uh, again, on the headache for your office staff or your resident calls at night. Um, but uh, this is what we've been doing for our outpatient radical prostatectomies. Um, hopefully this will be something that we can uh, provide more regularly for our patients, but I think we have to study this very carefully uh, and make sure that it's a safe and reliable technique. Thanks very much.